In this episode of At The Stark's Table, we are talking in our most explicit episode yet of how to make your marriage pop. Top tips for physical intimacy right from my house here in Glasgow. See you for At The Stark's Table making your marriage pop. everybody and welcome back to another episode of At The Stark's Table with me, Emma Stark. Yes, we are in our house, our kitchen, dining room, living room in Glasgow in Scotland. I am joined by the gorgeous trio of women round to bite me, <laughs> intelligent, godly, articulate. Just introduce yourselves again, ladies. I'm Deb Finch. I'm Ali McFarlane. I'm Jessica Stark. <laughs> so this is my daughter, all 19 years of her life. Yeah. She's been my daughter. I'd be weird if it was anything different. Uh, but just so you know, as we're starting, because this is perhaps the most personal of our broadcasts, and you thought some of the earlier episodes were personal, we are going deep and authentic. Look at these nervous, <laughs> nervous faces today as we dive in. So... Debs and Ali are actually specialists in marriage counselling and deeper healing and you work in the wellness department within our organisation and you do days of healing and freedom. You are used to the conversations of relationships, what works, what doesn't work and how yeah. to fix it. Yeah. Jessica, you are learning on the job. Learning on the job. And <laughs> Asking the questions. Asking the most personal questions, personal questions. I could ever ask my mother. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Now, can I tell you why we are slightly like, whoo, hold each other's hands, that'll be fine. We yeah. want to talk honestly in this episode about making your marriage pop. Yeah. Now, by that, can we be really honest? We are not talking about you know, the ebb and flow of day-to-day -day conversational life. Mm -hmm. This is about sex in marriage. Yeah. How it works, where it goes wrong, top tips for redeeming it when intimacy is shattered. Now, in another episode, we will just give marriage top tips. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we wanted to be quite specific about physical intimacy and intimacy in general around the marriage bed. So if you are not married, write these things down and don't use them until you are married. There we go, <laughs> Jessica's on it, okay? But most of our viewers are married in some form of relationship. And we know that over the years, just remind us how long we've all been married. Yeah, we've been married, Luke and I, for 21 years. 21 years. We are eight years. Eight, and David and I are 24. None. None. <laughs> Not no. even, not even dating. Not even dating. Don't worry, I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. You have many match makers in your life. I know. <laughs> but actually, to be fair, that isn't something I, I do match make a lot of other people, but not you, because I not do me. think that you, that has to be your choice. Yes. That is something I do, tend not to get Ali. involved in. But Ali's all over it. Go ahead, Ali. <laughs> right. Okay. So we have a list of things here um, that we've discussed beforehand. And actually, do you know, my friends in this At The Starks Table uh, series of programs mm -hmm. in this, this kind of a, a relational look through the magnifying glass, we did sit earlier today saying, "Do we? How honest do we really want to be?" Because of course, this is recorded. Yeah, yeah, I go yeah. back to thousands, thousands, and your father watches it. I'm hoping he doesn't. You're hoping he doesn't. <laughs> yeah, but yes, <laughs> yes. But I think the decision that we made, with some degree of peace, is yeah. Let's share. Yeah, yeah. let's share. So welcome to our world. Mm -hmm. All right, now let me kick this off in the fact that whenever I'm doing pre-marriage, Jesus take the wheel, as I say this, when I'm doing pre-marriage, I usually buy people a wedding night kit. 
not always, but very often, because you want to make that first night of physical intimacy as easy as possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now you're going to see how honest we're going to be. And what I tend to put in that is condoms. Mm -hmm. And yes, we do believe in contraception and that will offend some of you right there. <laughs> uh, that's not what we're going to talk about. So condoms. And then I do put some kind of lube in because there is that sense of intimacy for the first time is actually really painful if you mm -hmm. have waited and held yourself mm -hmm. and are a, a virgin on your wedding night yes yeah. and but to be fair i deal with very few of that it is it, something that we've lost the art of saving it's yourself true. which yeah. we really need to contend to get back uh, we dealt with that in earlier episodes yeah. but acknowledging that it's it's an art Physical intimacy is an art yeah. yeah, and it is a learned art and you have to go on a journey of learning each other. So I put lube in, I put massage oil in mm -hmm. so that there's some sense of just orientating skin to one another um, and then little shots of vodka or whiskey because sometimes, and again, <laughs> we've now offended half of the Bible Belt. But I'm being real here. Those four things go in. Condoms, lube, a shot of alcohol and massage oil. Just to help them set the tone of, this might be painful. You might need to, to you know, orientate skin to each other first mm -hmm. so that it's a sense of relaxation and some alcohol. And that is in the bag I give to uh, people uh, on their wedding night. Is that what you're going to give? Your own daughter. <laughs> Am I going to get that? To yeah, no, absolutely. No, Luke. Luke had a, a chat with um, our brother-in-law. He did, he, and Luke came with a kit. When well, because your brother-in-law was married before you guys. Brother-in-law was okay. married before us, um, and he was our youth pastor at the time. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, Luke had all the stuff, like just like you That's mentioned. Ready to go. And he also <laughs> yeah. had, and and Tim had said candles would be good as well, you know. And Luke, I remember, had brought two from TK Maxx full-size candelabras. <laughs> I know. Candelabras. I know. I know. Full, like it was like a full, like church altar. Shut it was up. horrific. Oh, that's a little bit of a dodgy image much, right there. So far. But just the helpful advice of those things yes. was so was so useful. Yes, when you're starting off and mm -hmm. understanding that it, it it takes a while to find um, what works for you and what doesn't work mm -hmm. for you. Yeah. Okay. Now. Each of you have yes. top tips. Yeah, I'm going to ask what your general top tips, first of all, are. Top tips. Baseline, okay. general top tips. For good physical intimacy good within physical a marriage. Intimacy. Debs, kick us off. Don't steal mine. <laughs> Communication. <laughs> yeah. No, but we've, we talk, because Ali and I, we do have to talk a lot because... Yeah. Um, it's what we do together, mm -hmm. um, you know, with couples. So we, we, it is something that we often do talk about. Mm -hmm. But I've been married 21 years, Jess. That's a long time. Yeah. And this marriage has been a journey from being young like you mm -hmm. are right up until a seasoned married person. And my, my top tip would be, and it is the communication. It is the knowing each other. The being real, the being vulnerable, and that nothing is off topic, mm -hmm. and yeah. that nothing isn't talked about. And growing up in a ministry family, and I know we mentioned this in previous episodes, there isn't always the place to ask questions, yeah. to to just know or to feel that this area of your life is a separate, not talked about area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so for us, one of the biggest journeys has been it just being a normal part of who and what we are yes and not a separate secret part something we don't talk about yeah. yeah it is the it's actually a central part of who and who him and i are together as yeah. a couple yeah communication yeah, yeah. yeah. lovely Ali? i think i would say um not comparing with okay. other people and understanding that you two together have your own journey and mm -hmm. as much as you can ask advice from other people and whatever within the communication everything that's going to look unique to you two yeah and and not feeling that need to attend to what someone else has or what someone else is doing or um so figuring yeah. each other out yeah yeah 
Definitely. It's interesting yeah. when we talk about a frequency of intimacy and you say, let, you, let's not play the comparison game. Mm-hmm. I mean, social media in the world forces you into the comparison game. 100%. Mm-hmm. In all, I mean, I trained as a counsellor at the same time as I was doing my first degree. So, I mean, that was, I'm 40 six now and I started that when I was 18 training as a counsellor mm-hmm. and looking at people-centered counselling and um, so it feels like decades of my life have been given into this but uh, but frequently it is you know the pressure to conform to a standard of the world mm-hmm. and everybody's libido and sex drive and expectations very different and everybody's physical stamina is very different yeah. different mm-hmm. yeah and it, different ages and stages are uh, go through different things now mostly when i'm in the counseling room with people and i say you know what would you like what, what's your frequency aim in this mm-hmm. i would say the most standard thing i hear is twice a week mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay uh, it, it's rare that there's any more desire for frequency. Occasionally you get something less than that, mm-hmm. particularly when there's been a long period of abstinence. It would just be nice if we were touching each other. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you acknowledge that that is, and I'm going to come to some top tips after there's been a long gap. But actually that sense of, you know, twice a week. Now for some of you watching, you're like, oh my goodness, twice a week would be the dream, <laughs> you know, because it's been a while and we, we can get out of the art of it. Mm-hmm. Um, so that conversation of what is right for you, what is right for me, acknowledging your physical health, acknowledging your history together. Mm-hmm. But what I'm surprised that people don't talk to yeah. each other yeah. about my level of physical need, Mm -hmm. your level of physical need, your and my sex drive together and why we have shrouded that in shame and when actually it's an essential part to how intimate we feel and how well we function Mm -hmm. as a couple is the honesty of, well, how how often for you? Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask you an honest question? Mm -hmm. Because I know that we've talked together about and she has given me permission to ask this question. You and Taylor being out of sync. Yeah. What what turned that around to being in sync? Um, conversation and asking the question. I do believe you took us out for dinner. <laughs> I did take you out for dinner. We got to the end of our dinner and Emma says, so do you want to talk about anything else? And I was like, hmm. And she went, physical intimacy? <laughs> In the middle of the restaurant. And I just go, okay, well, yeah, let's talk about it. I was like, how often should we be physically intimate? Mm-hmm. And I think for me, I had struggled because so often we talk about men and women being so... We, we box people in. Yeah. If you are a woman, you're going to be less interested. Um, your desire is going to be much lower than if you are a man. Yeah. And if you're a man, you are going to want to have sex every day. And that's how we brand them, right? Yes. Don't yeah. like, like, it's, it's very yeah. cliched. Yes. Yeah. It is. And so when I got into my marriage, and that's what I had expected, and found out actually we operate in the complete opposite sex roles. Yeah. So it's, it's completely different. And so I was like, am I broken? Is there, like, is there something wrong yeah. with me? Is there something wrong with him? Is this, is yeah. this okay? And having that conversation and actually just asking the question to you mm-hmm. and you being like, oh, you are totally normal. This is totally fine. Yes. Totally just blew it open and was like, <laughs> we can now have the conversations about it. Yes. And mm-hmm. so conversation out of that was then sparked between me and him and all of it just really healthy and being able to communicate. And so that's why my top tip would have been communication. Yeah. yeah. Because the fact that we even just started to talk about it yeah. just made us both feel just so much more normal. Yes. And like, actually, we don't have to compare ourselves yeah. Yeah. to everyone else. Yeah. And I don't have to feel like a, a complete weirdo. Uh, yes. Because I don't, I'm not the same as my friend or, yeah. you know, shared experience. Like if, if, I, if I'm talking to multiple people and I'm not the same, then actually... Yeah. yeah, that's okay. Communication. You, yeah, yeah. You guys have all spoken about kind of the beginning, I suppose. I suppose yes. The honeymoon phase, yes. the first times, the basket that you get, how you've started that conversation. <laughs> but I want to ask the difference between honeymoon love and choice love before we go into some more topics. What, you mean like physical? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. I- I'll tell you some top tips and then Deb's jump in because you and I have been married the longest here. Um, I think it's very easy to 
either get into a rut or get into abstinence by accident. Mm. Mm. I think stress, children, mm -hmm. yes. um, push healthy patterns out of the way. Mm -hmm. And when people come to me, they're not coming to me because everything is perfect. People only turn up at my door because it's really going horribly wrong. That's right. And they want, and the same for your mm -hmm. door. And how many, we've had hours of conversations yeah. with people. I have a, a, an, a homework exercise that I give to people. Um, and it kind of came from when David and I were dating, uh, in the 60 days prior to our wedding, David got a little piece of paper um, and he wrote on it, one thing, This is now this is a dating top tip, but I'll come to the sex top tip. He wrote on it, one thing he loved about me every day. Mm -hmm. And I kept those in a little Tupperware box, mm -hmm. you know. And now, to be fair, by the time we're like day Aww. 55 or something, you know, you're, <laughs> you know, you said everything. I like that you've got small ears, you know, right, okay, <laughs> yeah, fine. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but there was nothing sexual in that because yeah. we weren't sexually active. So he, it, it, so by the time I'm walking up the aisle, um, I feel so um, loved because yeah. I have seen it written down. Yeah. Now I then transferred that exercise, which he just came to spontaneously, into people's sex lives. Write one thing down every day that you like physically, because sometimes the conversation is very difficult to start. Yeah. Rip it up, get a little box each. And you put into your spices box what you like physically. Mm -hmm. Now, 60 of those is a lot. You probably don't have that. But you would need at least 20, 25. I like being kissed on the neck. I like when you, you know, put on mood music. I, and it's very sexually orientated. Now, what you are doing there is you are creating desire but you're creating conversation and then you are creating this sense of um, understanding of what each person's preferences are physically. Mm -hmm. And some people are brought up so shut down. You, you, we're dealing with, with yeah. a, a, abuse victims very often and um, yeah, you know, rape true. victims yeah. Or, yeah. or people where intimacy has been screwed up by pornography. Yeah. And so you're developing a healthy conversation and, and then, of course, you, you get to open your box and read, oh, this is what my husband likes. Mm -hmm. And this is what, you know, brings him alive physically and, and vice versa. And it brings a dimension of um, sexual joy and chemistry into the marriage. Um, it, is a, it is one of the most beautiful um, activations or homeworks uh, that I've ever given and it revolutionized I wish I had somebody on that uh, that I'd actually given to do it yeah. it revolutionizes intimacy and yet it's a very simple tip of yeah. writing down sexual preferences yeah. and desire and what you like and you know it's the sense of um the joy of that within marriage mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that's where I would start if there is something mm -hmm. that is that is not symbiotically working together. Any comments on that? Because I do have other tips. No, that's great. That sounds amazing. That's great, yeah. And, and you know, you're all, take, you're, you're all, taking, you're all taking notes. Yeah, and I've, <laughs> I've heard you talk about that before. And it's, yeah. it's that shared intimacy as well. So what what does it, what do we, what's our shared intimacy yes. relationship? Because sex doesn't always start in the bedroom. Not at all. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's the big, my biggest top tip is knowing that it, 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 Luke and I understanding that it's the every day and the every yeah. part of our relationship that leads to that. Yeah. And to have a healthy sex life, mm. we have to have a good marriage as well. Yes. In that the, it, is yes. A, it is a safe relationship. Yeah. It is an open relationship. It is a real relationship so that then when I am with him in that way, it is just a completely natural and happy place for me to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's working it's working on all of that. And we often look at each other and go, oh, if only we were like how we are now, back in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like yeah. that unhealed version of us wasn't having as much fun as yeah. this version of us is. Mm -hmm. You know, and it it actually it's a choice, like you said, it's choice love. 
but it's a choice that that means it gets better and i'm not saying that just to say it it actually does get better it sounds like a a practical way of getting into the communication that you guys are talking about yeah. you know if you struggle to come in to just straight open up conversation what do you love what do you not love what do yeah. you want better if yeah. that's something you struggle doing getting into that conversation it sounds like this is a very practical way of yes. sitting down and being like yeah. we're going to write it out because uh, yeah. this is yes. one way of getting yeah. it out I mean I do want to talk to you then about when the intimacy you know the power play type and the rejection conversations mm -hmm. I have had to say to a number of people Sometimes you just need to diarize it. Yeah. You yeah. need to talk and you need to put it in the diary. Yeah. Do you think then that is one of the differences between honeymoon love and choice love? Actually saying honeymoon love, oh, it's just yeah, yeah, expressing yeah. the It's this it's almost a, a urgent hormonal instinct in yeah. your honeymoon yeah. love. Would you yeah. say yeah. that yeah. then comes under the choice love of, yes. I need to write this down. This has this got to be diarized. To do. This yeah. has yeah. got we to be diarized. You have to yes. value it. Be yes. yeah. And yeah. that actually, people go, oh, oh, that sounds so, you know, mechanical. Yeah. Maybe it needs to be sometimes. Sometimes you have to put it, in. now the other things that I would say around that is, Give yourselves a break and do sensible things like sleep naked. Yeah, yeah. I mean, come on, it's the same time. Sensible, <laughs> sensible. Really, I mean, it, it, you know, if, if these are struggles, yeah. buy some massage oil. Yeah. And mm. the other thing that I send people to do is sometimes you need to build sexual tension yeah. or sexual history. Yeah. Now, this is. I'm going to come back to you on this. This is because this is like you need to go underwear shopping. Mm. Yeah. yeah, you need to massage each other. Yeah. You need to have a glass of wine. Yeah. You need to put this in the diary. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes it's as brutal as those kind of things. When did you last do anything that created sexual tension or sexual history? Yeah. Mm. Do you want to talk about that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're sounding like we've not had this preacher. <laughs> I, like, I don't know which part you want me to say. No, no, whatever comes into your mind. Um, yeah, I just think you have to, um, you have to just be intentional about it. Yeah. And that thing of knowing what each other likes and stuff um, is so important. And so to to foster healthy sexual intimacy in marriage, like mm. I can't expect something from my partner yeah. when I'm not invest, like when I'm not equally invested in yes. it. Yes. And so, um, yeah. so underwear shopping, like if you know your husband likes nice underwear and you're fostering great sexual relationship in your marriage, yeah. then get some nice underwear yes. and yes. then wear a little top that, you know, shows a little bit of it around the house yes. and off we go. But, you know, yes. go to bed at the same time. Yeah, that's a top oh, tip. Oh, it's massive. That is a huge top like, tip. Like, yeah. you know, go, go to, to bed, bed early at the same enough time. where you're not absolutely shattered, yeah. 1, 1 a.m., it's yes. probably yes. not where it's happening. Yes. Um, you know, just things like that. Let's talk about mm. rejection mm -hmm. and power play. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The two Achilles heels, mm -hmm. yeah. I think. Mm -hmm. Because we, we will mm -hmm. have seen this a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm always rejected, I'm always rejected. No, that may not necessarily be the case, but even being rejected mm -hmm. once feels like I'm always rejected. Always. Mm -hmm. Yep. Or um, uh, the power play where it's just like an urgency on one part, but there's no associated in intimacy. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it feels very transactional. And that's, that's it. It's when it, yeah. And I think that is something that we see a lot of. Yeah. Um, and it, in a way, how I would term it is sexual intimacy is a bank you withdraw from. Mm. Therefore, you have to deposit into it. Very good. Or you have nothing to withdraw. Mm. Very good. good. So like when that. we're when we're talking to couples, it's well, what are you going to borrow from? Like, where yeah. is that withdrawal? You have to deposit into that relationship account. Yeah. To or, or you're in negative equity, mm. um, and it does become power play. If yes. if not, because actually, it's not even kind to have that sort of demand on an area of relationship, yet there's nothing else. And for mm -hmm. a woman, mm -hmm. it's usually the woman, she can feel very, very ignored, but then physically not ignored. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
and we that, see that a lot. we see that a lot yeah we see that a lot and it's actually very very damaging yeah. to a relationship um and then on the flip side we can see a lot of men feeling physically ignored mm -hmm. and um it, they feel very rejected yeah and again that can cause a lot of damage and it's about that what is our joint bank account now we are married what are we both mm. depositing in and mm. we both get to withdraw from this yeah. yeah i'd say rejection is like the most dangerous thing within the mm -hmm. marriage mm -hmm. um, place just because uh, rejection leads to a partnership with independence you know, like that's what I think we watch the most is as yeah. is, is, is couples feeling rejected physically, uh, one or the other, and then it comes to a partnership with independence. We're actually okay. Well, if you're going to reject me, then I'm no longer going to come to yeah. to offer myself or to yes. to try to put myself in a place um, where I can be rejected. So I'm going to stay away from that place. And then we often find that that ends up what we've already talked about in previous episodes. Sex by and yourself. Yeah, yeah sex, sex by, by yourself. yourself. Yeah. And so that's kind of, yeah. it's so important that rejection yeah. doesn't happen in this place of physical intimacy. Mm -hmm. um, and we come back to communication again. Can we talk about it? And, and that means I think there is a burden that, uh, there is a burden to say yes in that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's an interesting conversation to have if there is an approach mm -hmm. How would you deal that deal with that? Mm. Actually, if you can, you say yes. Yeah. You yeah. do not want to feed the demon of rejection back and forth between each other because then you mm. get into all sorts of That's issues. That's right. Yes. I thought that was interesting. You were saying that earlier that actually you say yes. And I was like, That's something completely nope. new and completely new to the concept of even just my body my rights yeah yeah we're gonna offend heart. so many people and I, well, <laughs> yeah. but it, you, you know and i mean the whole of you saying we understand but actually that i say yes unless i've got a reason and then you share that reason you know yeah. and you share that and reason, share that and reason. Said that earlier and it's like yeah can I, and actually I'm, I'm too tired is not good enough at that point mm -hmm. It's not good enough. No. Hey, and does this need to be a weekly conversation you guys are having? I, I mean, it, it, you, you're only in this conversational area if something is broken. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So when something is broken, it requires over communication, not yeah. under communication. Yeah. Really so yeah. it is that sense that um, you're making an approach. I'm not there. I am going to do everything within my power to say yes because this is a joint venture of a marriage yeah. that actually we are one flesh. I have to lose the singleness mindset, my rights, my body. Yes. And um, actually we are giving of our bodies to each other, yeah. sometimes sacrificially. I was gonna say, is it right to say, I do this for you sometimes? Yes, sometimes sacrificially. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, can I say that again? Sometimes sacrificially, yeah. Yeah. because two are one flesh here, because we are serving each other yeah. as a husband and wife team. Mm -hmm. Now, if there is abuse and manipulation and power play, that is a very separate conversation. Absolutely. Yeah. But in the in the run of the mill, you are yeah. aiming to not withhold yourself mm -hmm. yes. unless there is a very good reason, and yeah. therefore you are saying genuinely I love you and I want to be intimate with you but do you mind if we do this tomorrow or can we go to bed earlier tomorrow or you know uh, do you mind if actually you give me a back massage first and so the aim is of mutual serving and and give it, and giving of yourselves yeah. that is counter to the culture it is it is very counter to culture That's, yes and the whole um consent thing and consent matters which is not completely at all what we're talking about that there's no consent and that's clear but you just saying just say yes actually sometimes i i think in the in the ebb and flow of the of the attempt to heal a marriage when you are both working on it you are aiming at that direction now if there is force or no. uh, we're in a different. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there, that a different, is that different is a different conversation. conversation. Yeah. Or yeah. Manipulation yeah. or coercion. Yes, manipulation. We're, coercion. we're in a different 
Yeah. But yeah. Re remember what sex is, and, and we, we're, we're having this conversation as Christian women mm -hmm. within the context of a Christian home. That's right. Within the context of a Christian ministry. Yeah. Within a context of why are we doing this? Mm. And why are we putting our necks on the line like this? Yeah. Because for you, dear friend, we want you to hear mm -hmm. Christian women have yeah. this conversation. Yeah. And so what is the purpose of sex? Well, clearly in scripture, it's procreation and, and children. But let's go back to something that we alluded to in our earlier episodes. And it is that one day we will join with Jesus in heaven and you get to this euphoric, climactic in, environment where the atmosphere of heaven mm. is electrically alive. Yeah, and that sense of uh, almost that orgasmic state of heaven mm -hmm. where you are so fulfilled mm -hmm. and so alive and that the gift of God into the marriage bed is a foretaste of the atmosphere of heaven. I was waiting for this to come you back. You knew I'm going to come back into I conversation we <laughs> because you, you have to anchor it in that. So therefore, it's why we hit sex by yourself on the head as a no-no oh, is why we yeah. hit sex, uh, the pornography situation on the head is a no-no as well mm -hmm. because it is taking it into the kingdom of the world versus this sense of the pleasure of anticipation of the marriage of the lamb yet to come and I yeah. know people kind of wince at that kind of thought mm. but that sense therefore that m my husband and I two becoming one flesh are, dis are exploring each other physically and exploring what makes each other come alive and, and the touch and the anticipation and the serving each other and the, the, uh, the, the in it for what we can give versus what we can take yeah, is, is such a model of the kingdom of God. Absolutely. And so that sense that if you are if my husband is a rise or vice versa, that there and there is desire that is there, remembering that desire is a godly thing in, yeah. if used in this context. Mm -hmm. I am trying to say yes in that mm. and uh, and vice versa mm -hmm. to that sense of um uh deep, deep intimacy. Only my husband gets to see me in that state. Mm -hmm. yes. 100%. Yes. It's so precious. Yes. And Jesus is in the midst of that with joy. Yeah. Yeah. And the yeah. Spirit of God is in the midst of that with joy as this gift of how you feel alive at that moment mm -hmm. is how heaven will taste forevermore. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we just find that almost an offensive thought because we yeah. have sullied and tarnished and dirtied 100%. sex which is why there is no salaciousness in this conversation there's no titillation in this conversation there's no perverseness in this conversation no. apart no. from saying to each other learn from us talk about it and take some top tips and really my prayer is that your skin may be genuinely, this is what I'm praying for you watching, your skin, if you're married, would be genuine, and I pray this a lot, uh, resensitized back to each other as man and wife, yes. that it is in the touch of husband and yes. wife that you may come back yes. alive yes. and alive to each other and more alive to Christ through this foretaste of the atmosphere yeah. of heaven absolutely absolutely it's true let's talk about desire yeah and how to bring passion back into it. i mean you've kind of answered a lot of it actually and i think what you've said so far even is enough to say how do i make my marriage pop <laughs> what you're covering is but say you all. have done everything that we've just but yes about. say you've done everything you've just spoken about <laughs> even you you know you were saying eight years that's a long time to be having sex with one person but it is, and you guys even longer. <laughs> three times that. We're three times ah, that. You give me so much hope. <laughs> it gets better with age. But, uh, you know, bringing that passion back into years of marriage mm -hmm. and making it, this is an exciting choice. This isn't a labor of, you know, this is an exciting choice. How do I make Can it passionate? I uh, was asked quite recently uh, by an older person mm. if um, like certain 
sexual positions and different things were demonic. Oh, do you know, I have been asked that a lot. Yes. Isn't that a weird thing? So, I'd like, so for my generation, I, I kind of feel like we don't have... We don't have the same hang ups, like we're because of what or we're exposed fears in that to. Area at all. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, are, like, can we give them permit? Like, what, what would Permi- you say to them? Per- 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 permission. permission to be explorative? Or? I, yes, I think so. I, I would say yes to that. Yeah. And um, if it comes from the, the root of emotional intimacy, mm-hmm. then I think exploring physical intimacy can have a lot of different positions <laughs> and a lot of different places yeah and the sense of joy in that now can we just oh now we're going to have to be sodomy. very honest and um, the bible forbids sodomy so, that, so that's yeah. the only sexual position that the bible is like no we do not do that yes is it really no we do not do that there's your line yep. yeah there's your line. biblical scriptures incredible <laughs> what scripture says there's yeah. your scripture line my friends okay but that sense of <laughs> and if um, you don't know what it is google it <laughs> <laughs> right but i tell you there's another <laughs> there is another thing i have actually made people do this in front of me to their utter squirming uh where are we going with this <laughs> it's fine don't worry so if there is intimate problems you need to eyeball each other yeah. you need to mm-hmm. see each other mm-hmm. so at that point this is not a conversation about positions okay this mm-hmm. is a conversation about realigning intimacy yeah mm-hmm. so sit naked yeah there's no sense of this isn't in front of you you tell me <laughs> no i guess. sorry <laughs> just to be clear i i, I actually did not naked they were dressed but i made them do this put your hand on each other's hearts you know hands each other's hearts feel each other's and stare Mm -hmm. and stare in each other's eyes and you just are coming into that place of being seen Mm -hmm. yeah feeling each other's heartbeat yeah and actually you can do that for several days and and there's nothing else that happens but you have to make yourself see each other yeah. and be seen and allow yeah. that. And that I no, you're right. I didn't get them to do that. But I actually, okay, back up a step. I had a couple who were virgins and they were getting married. This is rare. Um, and they, they weren't holding hands. They weren't kissing. There was nothing and they were about to walk down the aisle. I'm having a bit of a panic mm-hmm. because I'm thinking there's no sexual tension here. Mm, mm. What am I going to yeah. do with them? Yeah. What am I going to do with them? Why don't you want to rip off each other's clothes? Uh, well, well, <laughs> I, was, I was in my head thinking that. The whole thing was arranged and I'm thinking, I've got to get something of sexual tension back in here. So I sat with them in front of me and I just said, you are going to stare at each other Mm. and you're going to put your hand in each other's hearts and I'm going to watch this, okay? And I want you to see each other Mm -hmm. and I want you to, and I'm going to pray for you. I prayed for them as they were looking at each other. Mm -hmm. It's not like this kind of prayer. Look at each other, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray for awakened desire. Mm -hmm. Now, once you see each other and you see each other, okay, Mm -hmm. seriously, and you're in that rhythm, then I think a lot of these different physical exploration comes on the back of I'm seen and I'm loved. Mm -hmm. And then you don't get into that weird stuff where it's just about a transaction. Yes. It's building capacity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes you just have to start and build enough capacity. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yes. Playing to strengths. Should Mm -hmm. we talk about playing to strengths, Debs? Yeah, playing to strengths because you in know, terms of initiation. no two people are the same and, and you yeah. usually do find in in a relationship one is stronger at organising or keeping yeah. the diary or just keeping all the plates spinning. Yes. Mm-hmm. And you know, so play to those strengths. And if if you are always the initiator, that's fine. Yeah. It doesn't have to be about um Oh, he doesn't love me enough for yes. you know that that is where you are strong and that yeah. is the beauty of 
of you being in that partnership. So play to those strengths, yeah, and organize some things because, and that's me in our relationship. Yeah. I am very much the plate spinner of yes. everything virtually. And, you know, so I, I did in the beginning of our marriage get upset that he didn't plan dates or that yeah. he didn't, and he didn't do this. And, he, and I was like, oh, but actually, you know, it, it, again, the conversation mm -hmm. and just the relationship growing and the just let each other off the hook. You know, mm, if yes, it, like that's, that's been good. the biggest thing, just mm -hmm. like you can get offended, but you choose to pick up the offense. Yes. Yeah. And so us saying, I choose not to constantly pick up this offence was yeah. a game changer. Mm. Yeah. And so, yeah, I plan the dates and, I, and he enjoys them. <laughs> and, you know, he's not, his hand's not behind his back and he's not persuaded yeah. in any way. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it is definitely plain to strengths. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, and it's the same in terms of I have an opportunity as well to show my husband that I enjoy spending time with him yes. and I enjoy him in that way because if I was constantly, say, mm -hmm. making him feel that his desire was inappropriate, yeah. yes. then that's a whole other set of problems. Mm. But it, so you're playing to your strength and organising dates and actually it's mutually beneficial. Mutually beneficial. Yeah. Mutually I, beneficial. It's interesting that you, you talked at, at the beginning about... Um, and I hope it's come through loud and clear that physical intimacy is, um, a, 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 let's use the word love making because I don't think yeah. we have used that terminology. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, that really it is the making of yeah. love in a lifestyle. It is. Yeah. And uh, that, 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 that the making of love or the choosing of love starts as soon as you wake up for a healthy marriage. Let, let me tell you about uh, my, my husband. <laughs> He's actually listening right through here. I'm so glad you can't see his face. But he's the only person in the world that doesn't, that sees me with no makeup on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Apart from maybe a midwife or two along mm -hmm. the years that you have. But mm -hmm. he sees the disheveled hair. Yeah. And he sees uh, me at my worst. Yes. You know, the, the morning breath. And the, all of that. Yeah. He has brought me a cup of tea in bed every morning for as long as I can remember. I'm the same. Is, is, I've is never the, made my own coffee on a morning, in the morning when he's not there. Mm -hmm. And for me, it is an act of serving love mm -hmm. that from the first moment in the day where I look at my worst, mm -hmm. I am seen and loved. Yeah. Mm. Now, what that then does is that it frames every waking moment with a that comes from that with a moment that says I was seen yeah. and that I was loved. And actually it is that kind of rhythm that then opens the door for physical love making mm -hmm. after actually some other serving love has happened in and around, mm -hmm. which we're back to this conversation piece. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What what do I need what do I need from you? What, need, yeah. what frames our physical life together? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's back to that conversation and, and that sense of... I like that. What's the structure to our physical life together? Yes. The things that happen outside of the kind of sexualized stuff that actually frame it and make it more exciting when you do come to that intimacy with each other. I yes. Like I'm so, I am so aware that we will be being watched by people who's yeah uh, look this is yeah. because i used to work uh, for a pharmaceutical company oh here we have here we go, here we go. <laughs> we're way over time but shall we just keep talking yes um, yeah uh, i used to work for a pharmaceutical company and i sold viagra for years mm -hmm. and i was used to those kind of medical conversations and really, you get a bit, to be fair, you get bored of them after a while. They yeah. lose all of their kind of like ah, teenage silliness very quickly. But I spent years of my life talking about dysfunction. Um, and of course, it was erectile. It happened to be erectile dysfunction in those days. Years of pictures and conversations that really lose all any sense of like mm -hmm. yeah, quirky funniness. So I am aware that 
there's a lot of stuff going on that will be medically lacking. Yeah. Uh, just the just pregnancies. I mean, just pregnancies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Time of the month, women's cycles. Yeah. What I would say in all of those things is that there are rewarding things mm. that you must keep building in that are hugs, kisses, yeah. cuddles, mm-hmm. touch, mm-hmm. that are the mm-hmm. bedrock are. of good sex. Compliments. Mm-hmm. Because we we have found that self esteem is massive, massive, massive. and you you build self esteem like you say from the minute you wake up on a morning, and so you feeling confident and good about yourself, it just overspills into every area that you share. It, it overspills. Does. So my my way of building desire in my husband, I know that I have to love every part of him and he has to feel like a good man. Yes. And he is a good man. Yes. But he needs to know he's a good man. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because he's he's not going to feel in a great place of desire to be intimate with me if I've spent all day telling him everything I wish he'd done differently. This this is it. And this on the it. on the flip side. Yes. And 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 actually this is where we understand. Can I say mature love? is better than teenage love. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mature mm-hmm. love and mature sex and longevity in physical intimacy is more rewarding. Oh, it is. Do not let, I'm looking right at you, do, and I'm pointing, <laughs> do not let anybody lie to you yeah. that that physical, animalistic, hormonal urgency that got you up the aisle is where it is all at. Yeah. Being chosen year after year after year 100%. after year and choosing somebody and choosing the words yes. that you say and choosing and pointing at them in the corner my husband choosing the cups of tea made black tea in the morning yeah. choosing that choosing that gives a higher high yeah because mm. it is you have seen me yeah in the worst yeah mm-hmm. and i am still chosen 100 percent. that's it is that not the most christ-like form of love you could ever yeah. have absolutely oh. and my daughter's 10 now our youngest and i'm 10 years on and i still i can still eat from that meal that was watching how he was with me after i'd given birth because with the others, the midwife had helped me and I'd saw myself with, with Sophia, um, it was just Luke and I. And he so tenderly took me and showered me mm-hmm. and took care of me and put me back together and I just felt a mess. Yeah. And that moment has lived with me ever since. And mm-hmm. 10 years on, that's another foundational stone mm-hmm. in what yeah. is our intimacy and in our relationship. Mm-hmm. Because in my most vulnerable moment, he was the kindest, just human he could be. Mm-hmm. And you do, you're right, you dine off that for years. I'm dining off it now, I'm a decade in. Yeah. And <laughs> he's, still, he's, still, he's still that guy. And I, I, am, I have to say, I am married to a very kind man. Yes. You know, he is, he is a very, very kind man. Um, and he's kind to everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, and he mm-hmm. serves, he's a servant and he has a servant's heart and he serves everyone. Mm-hmm. So I, I know mm-hmm. I am spoiled in that way. And yeah. he does treat me very, very lovely. Mm-hmm. Um, but at, at the same time, I know that I, I have a choice that we're talking about, that, that it comes down to choice, that I stop to thank him for those things. Yeah. And I notice his kindness and I don't exploit his kindness. And that he, he feels like the good man that he is because I have an opportunity to show him that. Mm. And he has seen me at my worst. And yeah, it's every morning. I, I hope what's screaming loud and clear, Jessica, because this will save me having to do some I'm of your marriage prep. I know. <laughs> when the right man pops on the, 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 the scene. scene and gets past your daddy, you know. That's going to be the hardest bit. Yeah, probably. Um, but that sense of choosing. Mm-hmm. I choose to find you attractive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I choose to put into my mind that you are the one that God has got for me. Mm-hmm. I, ch- I, I choose 
even though actually you might not look at your best in this moment, I am still going to override that with, you are the greatest thing that has ever happened to me. Yeah. yeah. You are the greatest thing. And I am going yes. to, 24 mm -hmm. years yeah. later, still say that. Yeah. And just the privilege that it is oh. to see someone at their worst. Yes. Like, you know, especially when we're talking about physical intimacy, to be the only person that gets to be that for the other person. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Like, the minute we buy into what the world is saying in and around the subject, we take away the fact that actually this is such a privilege and an honour yes. to love each other this way. Yeah, um, it is. Yeah. It is. And actually, you know, if it gets a bit stale and boring, do it. Have sex in a different room. That's right. It's incredible how simple just things it, are. Just make it fun. Buy oh. some extras. Yeah. We buy some yeah. extras. And, and we, we, <laughs> we try to embarrass the teenagers no, in the house. No, I'm uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, nah. You need different. recommendations. We can put a list together. Yeah. And like you, you've been in my house and Luke and I think it's quite, quite, <laughs> it's, it's fun to embarrass the teenagers with how, oh, how old people still kiss. I'm just going to yes. stand in the corner of your and room like, and like, just like, never sit in any never seat ever. ever. Yeah. But, but it's, it's. <laughs> That's not what oh, I get a new house. That's not what I meant. <laughs> but it is. It's about it's about modelling that fun and relationship, not that explicitly, mm. but just showing that that even at this point in marriage, it's still fun to be married. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, we. I, I really. We're going to <laughs> keep talking. These are only supposed to be half our programs. Breathe, Jessica. Breathe. Sorry. Keep okay. Going. Breathe. Breathe. Um. I would want to touch on the fact that some of you will have had infidelity in marriage. Yeah. Yeah. It's crushing, isn't it? It is. It is horrifically crushing. Yeah. It's not often recoverable from, mm -hmm. but I would say it is on occasions. I have watched people in marriage, this is to give you hope, I have watched people in marriage where their spouse has decided, oh, I'm going to um, be attracted to the same sex. And they've wor worked that through and come back. Mm. Or infidelities, and they've walked that through and come back. Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah. It is possible. It is possible, but only with both dependent on Christ to come back from that, because only he gives the ability to really forgive and heal. Yeah. I wasn't going to talk about this, but I think it's important. There are biblical grounds for divorce. And I think when we read the Old Testament, and I'm looking straight at you right now, and maybe Debs can jump in because you and I have probably thought about it, you dealt with it perhaps longer than these other ladies. In the Old Testament, divorce seems as a, a, a something you should not do and, and that is the the old testament vibe by the time we come to the new testament you watch the grace and mercy of jesus where he says look sometimes it doesn't work and rather than the shame of a divorce here is the grace to divorce now, David and I and my father have talked around this for years, having had to deal with it in various church members. But where there has been abuse or infidelity, coercion, manipulation, the ignoring of marriage covenant vows, I do think Jesus pours grace in for grace and mercy filled separations and divorces and those are painful but I don't want one of you watching this where it hasn't worked to feel shame yeah I want you to know that there's Jesus Christ New Testament grace when vows are trampled over the top of and biblically in the new covenant there's grace and mercy and compassion from Christ in that and there is clearly life on the other side of that as well yeah. Um, and there's life on the other side of betrayal. But we really want to bless you yeah. to think as Christian, I'm sure some men have sneaked into this, <laughs> but as Christian women, 
about the gift of mature love yeah. and the gift of love making and the gift of physical sex. And I bless you in your marriages that as this title is called, making your marriage pop, that that will be true for you. Mm -hmm.